Hello and welcome to a brand new format. The format name is up to change, so if you have recommendations, let me know in the comments. In this format, I'll present disturbing Reddit users, subreddits, and overall stories and posts from Reddit. This episode will feature a few very interesting ones. The first topic alone could have had their own video dedicated to them due to their very off-putting nature. I'd honestly say it's close to Worthless319 in terms of disturbance. But before we start with the video, I have a very important announcement to make. This is the day I finally can call myself a real YouTuber, since this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is available on iOS, Android and PC. It offers great graphics and turn-based combat. The best part is, the game is completely for free, so check out the link down below or scan the QR code on screen to download the game. I'm impressed with how smooth the game runs and how many features it has. You have the campaign, the storytelling, the arena, the dungeon quests and so much more. I've chosen Gallic as my champion because he has AoE damage and it's very important in game and hey, it works out pretty good so far. One of the most exciting parts about this game are definitely the bosses. Some of them are pretty tough and you definitely need to upgrade your armor and level up your champion. To do so, you can download the game through my link down below and get a starter pack which is worth around 30 bucks completely for free. Additionally, you'll also get the champion Virgis and more. You'll find these rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Once you're in, you can find me in game under the name Eudoxia. And if you're fast, you can join my clan. I'll see you in game. Let's start with the video. Since this format will only include Reddit topics, you can make suggestions for future episodes by posting on my subreddit. If you end up enjoying this video, please make sure to sub to the channel and maybe leave a like and comment. Let's start with topic 1. Cash22 is probably one of the most disturbing users I've seen so far. Due to the insane nature of his posts, his accounts keep getting deleted and all I can work with are archives or things that I've recently seen. That's also why certain screenshots are in low resolution. His current account is called throwaway0270 but it might already be banned at the time of me writing the script. I previously covered disturbing Reddit accounts such as Worthless319 or Snapfingers and even dedicated entire videos to them. If you haven't seen those, I definitely recommend checking them out. In both instances, we had individuals who were fighting their own demons and were not really a threat for others. The Redditor Cash22 differs a lot and is incomparable to previous cases. What I'll present in this video will only scratch the surface, since I'm only able to work with things that haven't been deleted yet, and this goes way deeper than you can imagine. This user would make posts, every day, for the entire day, multiple weeks on end. Keep that in mind. This initially caught my eye, when someone made a post on the subreddit curse comments. It reads, Cursed account. He's dead serious, I know it. He's been going on for weeks now, and I think someone's in danger. Attached was a post from Cash22 on the subreddit Confessions. It reads, I spy on my soulmate. As long as they have their phone on them, they go to the store, I can see. They're at home, I can see. I check very often, seeing where they are. I just like it to feel close to them, even when we are not physically close. And I like to think about what they're doing. The only downside is, I can't see them. Sometimes I think I want to make them a plushie and hide cameras in the eyes, so that in their bedroom I can see them sleep. But I'm worried that they may get changed there. If they do, and then they find out I put cameras there, they'd feel like I spied on something too personal, even though it isn't my intent. And I want to lock them up in a cage in the basement, also lined with cameras, so I can watch them when I'm busy. They are so cute. Trust me, this isn't even scratching the surface. Let me show you what I mean. In the next one, he shares his intention as to why he wants to cage her. It reads, I wanna study my beloved so I can make a cage perfectly suited for them so they'll develop Stockholm Syndrome in there while listening to songs with messages about love and kidnap and romance all in one, all the time, and come to see them and be nice to them and care for them, protect them for love. His next few posts continue in this fashion. In this one, he shares the following. I want to keep my partner locked up in my basement. 
I began cataloging my partner's interests and aesthetic choices more than usual because we started making plans to move out together because I want to make a safe haven for them in the basement. I'm not going to lock them up, against their will, and of course we're going to share a normal bed together like any couple. I know which carpet they have in their current room, their favorite brands of consumables, the media they're a fan of to buy merch for them, and their favorite plushies. Just to keep them safe from the outdoor world if I have to go away to work and cannot bring them. I would love to hire them eventually, so we don't have to be apart, but I kinda have my business on the back burner right now, it's not very big, active. Let them stay in their locks safely, with cameras, so I can be sure they are okay and they can have fun while being safe. They can text me too, keep their phone and everything. I am not interested in controlling their entire life. I know it's probably weird, but I just want to keep them safe to the point where I think about this almost constantly. He pretends to already be in a relationship with her and calls her his girlfriend and claims that they started making plans to move out together. It is implied by other posts as well that he's in a relationship with her which seems unbelievable and the talks of a maniac, but there could be some truth to it. He may play a character to appease her. This is exactly what he claims in the following post. His ramblings continue in this fashion, but this time a bit more extreme than before. The next one reads, I have a strong desire to kidnap my partner. I can't sleep sometimes because it bothers me that they are not with me. Whenever they do anything where I'm not there, I don't stop them because I respect their autonomy. I have the urge to just lock them away from the world in a containment, room, chamber, cage, so that I can always have them to myself. When they tell me what things they want or enjoy having, my brain sometimes drifts away to thoughts of how to implement those things in my own space, and so that I could hold them captive here in a way that would be least painful for them. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but I'm obsessed with the idea. It's constantly on my mind and hard to ignore, but I don't want to do this to hurt them, just keep and protect them. He says he respects her autonomy, but at the same time wants to lock them up to keep them for himself. This thought process doesn't exactly line up and it continues with the next post, which reads, I have a scrapbook filled with pictures of someone and cages I want to put them in. I have a scrapbook filled with pages of photographs of someone, pictures of their wardrobe, their bedroom, their favorite toys, their favorite things. I made a mood board collage about them and I'm working on a cage inspo page for inspiration for if I hypothetically made a cage to keep them in. You know, because I'd want it to be cute as well as personalized and visualizations really help me imagine. He is truly obsessed over his alleged girlfriend. The next post further illustrates his thought process and his feelings. It reads, I am extremely obsessed with my partner. I think about them all the time, to the extent where it's hard for me to sleep or work when they are not there because I think about them and the things I'd like to do with them so much. I've had a crush on this person for over a decade and I'm happy that we finally started dating but I feel like it's making me go insane. I constantly think about locking them up. I feel ill when they are not talking to me, especially when they are awake. I feel an intense need to protect them. I hate their friends. I hate anything that keeps them from me at any point on either end. I want to marry them so badly, but we haven't even been on our first proper date yet despite being an item for months now. They told me they weren't really into the idea of marriage, but another time I accidentally referred to myself as their husband instead of boyfriend and they ignored it, so maybe they are more open to it. I don't know, but either way it's something I think about constantly. I mostly showed you the most interesting aspects of his post history so far. However, he made a lot of posts talking about random things as well. It makes the impression that he uses reddit to vent about anything that comes to mind. He also shared a bit more personal info regarding his alleged relationship with his girlfriend. Here he states the following. I have the urge to continually lie to my partner. Before we were dating, I worked in the entertainment business, so to speak, and my partner used to hate me to the point of helping publish something about me that really damaged my career. They don't know that I'm the person this happened to because we were both very young at the time and I look markedly different now. I plan to tell them eventually because it's not a secret I can keep forever for multiple reasons. In preparation for telling them, I have the urge to make up randomly slightly bad things about myself to test their love or make up hypotheticals 
Like I told them, I'm socially awkward both due to this and to excuse how much I think about them and worry about them. But I'm actually not. I mean, reading people was a big part of my job during childhood, and it's not very common for people to work in that field as young as I did. I also create hypothetical situations. For instance, if I kidnap you quickly, do you think you would surrender to Stockholm Syndrome versus what if X kidnapped you? For the record, I'm not gonna kidnap them. I also assure them of things like that I would still love them even if they were disfigured, etc. Is that bad? Like, I haven't actually told any concrete lies that aren't subjective even though I sometimes want to because I care about our future but I still feel dishonest sometimes. But it is true, I'd love them no matter what. I've been pursuing them for around a decade and think of them pretty much constantly. I don't want to upset them ever. In the next one, he describes that he fakes illnesses purely for attention and to get away with stuff he said or did. He also says that he plans on making himself sick for real this time to get attention from people and also profit off of it. While this is pretty crazy so far, Cash22 adds an additional layer to his obsession. Here he states that he wants to eat his alleged girlfriend to have a part of her inside of him. He says that he won't eat her and that it's just his imagination and blames it on his diet. He previously said that he would do a 40 plus day fast, but this still doesn't explain the urge to eat your girlfriend. This obviously has nothing to do with his fasting. He's obsessed with her to the point of wanting to have her inside of him, so he doesn't need to worry about her not being with him. He's obsessed over the idea that she might not be there all the time for him, which makes him insane. Here are more posts of his to further support this argument. This one reads, I wanna cannibalize my soulmate. I look at my soulmate and I just wanna eat their flesh and drink their blood. They are so cute to me. I wanna be closer to them. So close. And what's closer than having them literally be a part of you? I'm not saying I'm gonna cook them or something. I'm just saying I think about it a lot. Blood vile necklaces are romantic and so is kissing, so drinking their blood and making out with the wound is just elevated romance. The whole thing is really just like being one with someone. I think it's cute. I know this could be a troll, but he made posts like these every day, for the entire day, and went on for weeks. This either is one of the most elaborate trolls we've seen, or we have a genuinely disturbing individual who shares his open thoughts about his victim. I saved this one for a long time, since I never was able to cover this in a full video or in any other format. A user that goes by Poisoned by Mom made two posts on the Off My Chest subreddit. This first post dates back 9 years ago. It reads, My mother has poisoned me. This is a throwaway account. Ever since I became an adult about a decade ago, my mother has been against me moving out of the house. I finally got a job as a line cook 3 years ago. My mother and rest of family, which includes my sister and father, has been against it, mainly saying that such a job cannot sustain me, which was true. They also said that I would hate working, which turned out to be false. About a year and a half later, I quit due to health reasons. The following spring, I got a new job as a computer programmer. While they seemed supportive at first, my mother and sister I lived with gradually became hostile. Eventually, I moved out of the house. About a month later, I lost my job, and about three months later, moved back home. Everything was cool at first, but as I was getting calls from recruiters and going to job interviews, they gradually became more hostile again, accusing me of being distant and not caring for them. However, they seemed to be very controlling and hateful of the fact that I wanted to move out and wanted a decent job. So last month, I finally got a job as a programmer again, but this time it was out of town. I had just enough money to relocate to the new city. They became very hostile starting a few days before I left, accusing me of not loving them, of hating them. On the day before I was scheduled to leave, my mother gave me two of the styrofoam ramen noodle cups and tore that cardboard covering that normally comes with it and threw it away. I was suspicious that they would try to sabotage my life, so I was careful in not trying to anger them. She gave me a few more food items, which I didn't use, to take on the trip with me. When I arrived at my new city and entered my hotel room, I chilled out. I was to go to work to the next day. So after the first day at work, I ate a cup of ramen noodles and felt ill. 
I knew that feeling because my sister fed me something that made me feel the same way in late 2011, which I then assumed was because of my recent illness. I felt weak, lightheaded, and short of breath. I drank water to make me feel better, because that's what I did last time that happened to me. Over the week, my mother kept calling me, making sure to remind me to eat my ramen noodles. I was short on cash then, waiting for my first paycheck. I never told her that I ate it. I suspected then that I had been poisoned, and after doing some googling, believed it was cyanide. Now, that is something that you should never have to think about, that your own mother would do that to you. So I resisted that thought, because I simply could not bear to think that. So I went to cyanidetest.com and ordered a kit, and I tried it. Now look at the graphics and the video on this page. Now here are the results of my test. I guess I am going to have to call the cops, and I will never speak to my family again. Now attached to this post was a website and an Imger link. He basically bought a cyanide detector off the website. According to the test, the food was indeed poisoned by cyanide. Regardless, it's still strange that this Reddit user knew that the food was poisoned in the first place. Especially by cyanide. It could have been any type of poison, so how did he exactly know? He said he did some googling, but that's pretty vague. One user named Fembot also pointed this out. And to give Poisoned by Mom credit, he was responding to questions which is pretty rare to be honest. Usually, OP will never provide anything after the initial post. His response reads as follows. I didn't know what it felt like. All I knew was that this was a familiar feeling. My sister fed me stuff that made me feel the same exact way earlier. And I suspected that it was poison since I had just finished a bowl of ramen noodles. I then googled it, realized that the symptoms matched cyanide poisoning, did more research on cyanide poisoning, and then ordered the test kit. I still wasn't ready to totally accept that I was poisoned, and was hesitant to go to the police just in case I wasn't poisoned. I'd say that this explanation makes sense. He would update his initial post one last time, which states, Update. I'm currently in Topeka, Kansas. I work downtown in a government office building, which has a police department. I visited the Capitol Police Station here and spoke to an officer. And he said he couldn't do anything about it, since the package was opened and might have been contaminated. So does anyone have ideas? A few months later, he decided to do one last update. It reads, My mother has poisoned me too. A few months ago, I posted this. I was only able to file a police report so far. The police don't have enough evidence to investigate. I've gone no contact with my family. I currently live in a cheap motel in Topeka, Kansas. Yesterday, after getting home from work, I work for the Kansas state government as a software developer. The lady at the front desk told me that my mother called them to speak to me. For security reasons, the motel needs both the name and room number, and my mother didn't have my room number. She didn't even attempt to call my cell phone, which makes me believe that she just wanted to know if I was staying there and where. So this morning, I left a little earlier than usual. The sky was still in the early twilight phase. I took the bus to and from work because my car blew a gasket almost a year ago before I moved and got my current job. As I was walking towards the bus stop, I saw someone in a strange car using their finger to tell me to come here. I looked but kept on walking. Then she opened the car door, and she was in a black outfit and a hoodie, which is strange for my mother. Then I knew it was her when I saw her face. She told me to come here, and I said no, kept a good distance. She said that she just wanted to know if I was okay. She said that she just wanted to hug, but I said no. I don't know if there was anyone else in the car with her. Regardless, she is a gun owner and a good shooter. She routinely kicked all of our asses in Duck Hunt when I was a little kid and still beat us when playing Wii games with the gun controller. I ended up taking another bus to get to my job. So when I get off of work, what is the best way to go home? Or should I even go? If not, where should I go? I really think that it is not safe for me here in Topeka. So if anyone knows of any .NET development jobs, please DM me. Also, please give me some advice. After this, he shared in the replies that he's doing much better now, with a nice job and better health. He shared a lot more in the replies, so if you are interested, have a look yourself.
This one happened almost two years ago on the RRBI subreddit and it's from a German reddit user that goes by sleepy and worried. The post itself has some grammatical errors and is overall not in the best English, so I'll change up a few things here and there while talking. However, you'll always see the original post on screen. Her post reads, Is my landlord watching me? I'm a 26 year old female living alone for the first time. My landlord has always felt a bit off to me. He is a man in his late 40s and has never been holding back with comments about the way I look etc. When I moved in, he was very clear about me not touching the two fire alarms in my bedroom and hallway. He justified it by saying that they were directly connected with the fire department and if I would interact with them I would cause an alarm. The alarm in my bedroom has always made me feel weird. It makes a lot of noises, especially at night, almost sounding like a remote controlled car and sometimes making a very muffled beeping sound. I brought it up to him once and he said it was nothing and if it should make more problems I should call him. But other things kept happening and I just felt like something was off. But at the same time people kept telling me I was overthinking it and was scared since it is my first time living alone. The first thing that felt off to me was as I was moving in. I grabbed the wrong shade of the color I wanted for my bedroom and it ended up looking a bit too bright. A few days later during a phone call, he snapped at my parents about how horrible the pink color for the room was and asked whether I was crazy. I had not let him inside my place so I was very confused but kinda brushed it off to me walking around in paint covered clothing. But things got weirder after that. During January last year I spent a day at my parents place and when I came back something felt off. No one was inside my apartment but I noticed something off. After walking into my bedroom a second time one of the drawers under my bed was pulled out and I don't remember ever touching it. Again, I brushed it off mainly because my parents told me that I probably just forgot and I kinda ended up feeling ashamed for bringing it up in the first place. Months later during the summer I took part in a gaming night on a friend's discord server and when I finally hopped off to go to bed at 4am I came into my bedroom to see my underwear drawers being open. I panicked and called my mom because she lived close by and I wasn't sure if someone else was still in the apartment. After that, I installed a door chain and got an alarm for the first time I spent at home. I suspected. My landlord had a second key and now probably wasn't able to get inside anymore. But that didn't cover the time when I'm not at home. Sometimes when I come back, furniture in my bedroom is slightly mispositioned, but my family insists that I just forgot that I moved it. I know I sound insane, but is it possible to have cameras installed in the fire alarms? And could I call the fire department in the non-emergency number to ask if they can take a look because of the weird noises the alarms make? I really just want my peaceful life back. Constantly knowing someone might have been in here in the past while I slept is really creeping me out and making me wanna cry. Do you have any advice on what I should do? The redditor also followed up on this post by sharing images of the fire alarm. After getting a reply from a fellow German clarifying that smoke detectors and the fire department aren't connected, OP followed up with an update on her original post stating the following. Good morning and thank you to everyone giving their input and sending messages. This morning has been very stressful so I apologize if I cannot get back to your DMs. I had a call with the fire department and they told me the alarm is not connected to them in any way, shape or form and that the smoke detector looks like it had been tinkered with. They told me to ask around. Maybe someone in my social circle knows a bit about electricity and they could come by to take it off and take a look inside. My mom's best friend is an electrician and I will try to reach out to him today to ask if he can come by ASAP. While she follows this up by stating that she cannot just take it off since it will cause legal consequences, her last update is by far the most interesting one. It makes this entire case even more mysterious than it already is. It reads, Update 23rd of March. Sorry for not updating instantly. Today was very stressful. Due to my mom's friend, I now know that the smoke detector is okay right now, but there's other stuff that came up. I don't know and can't say more about what is going on right now. I don't know what I'm able to say, so I'd rather not take any chances since there is an ongoing police investigation. All in all, I have made choices to keep my safety in short for now. Sorry for not being able to give some of you the closure they might want to hear. Maybe one day I might be able to share the full story of what happened. 
After reading this final update, I really had an off feeling about this entire situation. She seems to have been scared off by a particular individual or situation, which forced her to stop updating her post. She says that the police are now involved, but does not clarify whether she filed a police report, nor if she herself was sued. Regardless, it's probably for the better to not share more information, since this turned into a legal case. This also shows us that there might have been something more going on. That this was not a regular smoke detector. That she may have not been imagining things. It remains a fairly mysterious, strange and unsolved case to this date. The subreddit Creepy Encounters contains a lot of very interesting and unsettling posts. One of such comes from the user Mimnu. They made a post 10 months ago stating the following. Our pharmacist saved my sister from a possible kidnapping. This was quote, The two call office owners closed the office and started following them. One on foot right behind them trying to offer a ride and the other on a bicycle next to them on the deserted main road. My mother strictly refused held my sister's hand tightly and started walking as fast as she could when a white van appeared on the service road and started driving slowly next to them. The office guys had already arranged a ride with some really bad intentions and didn't seem to go away. They were probably waiting for them to get off main road to strike. On the next turn, two men came from the opposite side on the footpath. And to my mother's relief, it was a pharmacist and his friend who were returning to pick his car from his house parking after a walk. They saw the men in the van and immediately realized what was going on. They stopped, said hello and asked if she needed help. They agreed to walk them home. The office men fled upon seeing the guys. The kind pharmacist saw my mother and sister to the safety of our house. My mother never went back to that PCO again. In the replies, the OP adds that this happened in Pakistan. They had public call offices which were like little shops and the owner would have a couple of telephone sets for long distance calls. Depending on how old you are, this might be familiar to you. These were usually one of the only affordable ways to make calls outside of the local calling area. OP further adds that this seemed very calculated from the side of the call office owners. Her mother often went to the call office and they probably eavesdropped her conversations, which made them aware of her personal struggles. OP adds, Lastly, they knew that every side road leading to residential areas would be absolutely deserted. So they took their chance. Thanks to the pharmacist, they failed. That's all of the topics for this episode. The first two topics were pretty wild and I'll try to include at least one very disturbing or interesting topic in each of these episodes. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Before ending this off, I want to quickly thank the patrons. First off, I want to thank the elite tier patrons, which consist of 44, Connor Thunell, Courtney Occult, Krabs, Ugen, DJ Chest R, Dr. Redacted, Illy Bueno, Foster Bradley, I Love the Second Amendment, James Baker, Jamie, Kirsten Patricio, Lord of the Lizards, Madeline Tanner, Morgox C, and Next Equal, Rick, Santino Sierra, Shawnee, Spooky Dolcet, and Wayne Keir. Huge thanks to the Legend Tier patrons, which consist of Andrea906, Austin, Brian Cave, Brianna Schaff, Evie Meyer, MG, Amy Stringfellow, Christopher, Cassandra, Dennis Greasefire, Digital Capybara, Jeb, Malcolm Mart, Uncle Beefus, Vladislav Koshevi, Bibi, Bodhi, Darkener Lol, Lennon, Leray Andromeda, and Nee Castle. Thanks to every other patron in the supporter tier. I really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.